together and um, and FMC and uh, the girls over at Ag more than ever for having me on today. I, um, as you all should be while you're participating, is you guys should all be wearing your I Heart Canadian Egg, all of your egg swag that you can get from the Ag more than ever guys um, as they're traveling around to all the trade shows. I don't even remember where I got mine now because I've seen it at so many places, so it's awesome that they've been doing such a good job of, um, of raising awareness um, at all kinds of different trade shows and um, events all across Canada. So what we're going to go through today is um, really quickly kind of the Cliff Notes version of Social Media 101 for advocating for our industry online. So what we're going to do first is run through the platforms. Um, by platforms, I mean Facebook is a platform, Twitter is a platform, YouTube is a platform. So those are, whenever I say platform, that's what I'm referring to. So what we're going to do first is run through them, kind of give you the, the from the ground up version of here's what Facebook is and here's what it does, here's what Twitter is and here's what it does. Um, and then after that, we'll go through how you can actually use them and how your customers and how our consumers are using them as well. Ah, the slides even change. Um, so the entire point of why we're here today really to me boils down to this quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And to me, that's, that's why we're here today. We are here to be able to speak, um, speak thoughtfully, speak um, intelligently, speak eloquently with our consumers, with people that maybe don't understand food production and how it is, um, why we do what we do and how we do what we do to get those, you know, those animals, those crops from the farm to the table. And so that's what, that's what this is all about today, is about taking the conversations to where they're already happening. Consumers are really savvy these days. They're out there. They're doing research. They're um, they're having conversations about their food online. They're trying to find you guys. They're trying to find people in the industry. They're trying to find farmers. They're trying to find experts. Um, they're they're looking for research. So let's make sure that we're making enough noise to give it to them. So why social media in the first place? Why not um, why not get more ads and papers, why not write more stories, why not have more events? Because social media is such an amazing peer-to-peer -peer connection. It's true peer-to-peer -peer conversation. Um, you know, it's basically like sitting around at the coffee shop without having to drive to town. Um, you know, 78% of people trust the recommendations of other people and only 14 people trust ads. So, you know, I saw a lot of, um, well, people were checking in there, a lot of organizations, a lot of businesses. Um, so, you know, those People actually pay to avoid your ads these days, right? Um, if we were in a room, I'd ask you all to put up your hand and see how many people here had satellite radio or had a PVR on their TV. Those are perfect examples of how people are actually paying money to avoid the ads that you are paying to get in front of them. Um, so that's why we need to go here. We need to go directly to the source um, where people are having these conversations and join the conversations that are already happening. Just a slide here to show you the power of social media. Um, last year, Stephen Harper did not even use, um, uh, he didn't have a press conference. He didn't send a media release to announce his cabinet shuffle. He posted it on Twitter. Why? Because it's the fastest way to share information out to the masses, out to a broad, diverse audience, um, out to whoever it is that you're attempting to speak to. So, I mean, I'm sure that you all watch the six o'clock news and it's so frequent now, it's so common to see a quote that came from Twitter during the day. So-and-so said this on Twitter and that's what they're using as quotes now. They're using it as interviews. Um, again, you know, just a quick slide to show you the power of social media and how, how it's not just, you know, celebrities posting their pictures in the clubs. Um, it's our, it's our world leaders. It's our thought leaders. It's, um, it's researchers. It's, it's consumers. It's everybody in the world using this because it is such an immediate connection to everyone else in the world. Um, specifically again today, why do you guys need to be here? Because this is a trend. Know your farmer, know your food. This is a, it, it's not a, I can't even say it's a trend anymore. This is how food works. This is how consumers are making buying decisions um, based on how their food is produced, where it's from, and who's producing it. 
That's you guys. You guys need to be out there telling those stories. Um, like I mentioned earlier, our consumers are really savvy. They're doing research. They are, um, you know, they're they're having conversations online. So it's our job to be putting as much accurate information out into those spheres as possible, so that when they are doing research, the likelihood of them finding positive. Um, truthful, credible, scientific, agricultural information is increased drastically. And so how are you going to do that? You're going to post from the heart, post from the farm, the things that are everyday boring to you. You know, um, I saw someone from AgriTrend in there, you know, show people why you're working on um, variable rate fertilizer. Show them the benefits it brings. Um, you know, there was, I think I saw someone from the Beef Council there, um, you know, tweet from your meetings. Show them, show them the new processes that are coming in. Show them how intergovernmental trades work. Um, show people what happens in our industry, what's happening behind the scenes. That's really what what this is, is it's about showing people what's going on behind the scenes. Um, my dad has Twitter, and my dad's a grizzled old rancher up in northern Saskatchewan, and he tweets, uh, like all of his pictures are him turned around backwards in a tractor tweeting, hey, just putting out silage at 40 below, hashtag animals come first. Um, so, you know, he's just, he's really showing that rancher side. And so, I mean, it really has nothing to do with demographics. People always say, oh, social media is for younger people, but it's really not. It's, um, it, it has nothing to do with demographics and everything to do with interest. Uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of innovative, intelligent people using it just to be able to make those connections and use it as the research side. So the, the, the entire point I need to make here is that social media is not free advertising and it's not a propaganda machine. This is not a soapbox for you to get on top of um, and you know, get out there and berate everyone that has any semblance of inaccurate information that they're um, sharing on social media. It, it's, this is a place for you to create a community. Create that community, create that safe place for consumers, for other farmers, for industry people, for experts to come and have good conversation. That's what social in the social media means. Um, it's two-way, it's 15-way, it's 10 billion way communication. Uh, traditional media is one way, right? You read the paper, you watch the news. This is a chance for conversations and really to focus on that community building. Um, build, you know, so you have that community, you build it by having good content. And so like I mentioned before, that content can be whatever you want it to be. Here's a picture of my farm, here's a picture of my dog working hard, um, here's a picture of our board of directors working hard to get, um, I don't know, wheat into China, whatever, whatever it is that you guys want to work on, to build that community and then within that you can create that call to action. A call to action can be as simple as check out this website for more information. Talk to this guy for more information. He's an expert. Those sorts of things count as call to action, but you can't just jump in with both feet and uh, start giving orders and, uh, and like I said, just have using your key messages right away. You do have to build that community using strong content first, whatever it is you want that content to be. So now that we kind of have an overview of social media, um, you know, kind of the importance of it, the why social media in the first place, I'm going to move on to just chat really briefly about a few of the platforms and how they're used. So Instagram, for any of you that get um, pictures of people's food all over the place, probably what people had for dinner, um, probably pictures of their dogs if you follow me on Instagram, um, it's a photo editing and sharing app. So it, this is where the hashtag actually started. People think that Twitter started hashtags, but it started on Instagram. Um, so it's a great place to, again, follow. It's like if most people generally have Facebook. If you're using Facebook, pretend it's like Facebook, but all you see is pictures with quick captions on them. Um, so that's all it is. There's no, um, there's no, there's, that's it. It's a, pre, it's a really simple scroll through, look at other people's pictures app uh, that, that also uses the hashtag system. So if you want to find um, pictures of corn, you just use the hashtag, search the hashtag corn. You're looking for pictures of show cattle, uh, you know, uh, jackpot steers. That's what you search then. Um, you can follow people, you can unfollow people, they'll never know. Um, there are also things trend on there and you can reshare pictures just like on Facebook how you can share things there as well. So here's an example of how some current advocates are using Instagram. And so Instagram is awesome. Like I mentioned, uh, the hashtag is how, is kind of the basis of Instagram. Um, 
Selfie came out after selfies got so popular. There was a group of farmers that decided that uh, we needed some farmer-specific selfies. And so selfie started to trend. I think it was earlier this year. And so, you know, this is a perfect example of, um, you know, how you can search content to share if you don't want to come up with your own content, um, but also just to, you know, find find kindred spirits, find peers, find people that you might want to connect with, find people that have similar interests, uh, work in similar businesses, farm similar crops, you know, raise similar breeds of cattle. Take a look. Um, you know, the, the selfies and the advocates are also awesome because they always show the positive side. You know, the down in the bottom left there, the baby calf being hand fed early in the morning. Um, you know, great quotes, um, articles that have been shared, um, all kinds of pictures you can use as backgrounds, that sort of thing. But really, I mean, yeah, the, the, the selfie and the advocate are my favorite of the farm related hashtags. Um, egg more than ever, obviously a strong hashtag to use as well for advocating for the industry and um, yeah so that's what that looks like on Instagram next up YouTube um, not just for cat videos anymore YouTube is a it's basically it's a hosting video hosting and sharing platform uh, you can follow just like all other social media platforms. You can follow people. You can subscribe so that that content comes right to you. So if you want to get new, um, I don't know, new rap videos, as soon as they come out, you can subscribe and it'll come right to you. Um, YouTube has... This is probably one YouTube video that everyone out there has seen, I would imagine, especially if you're on a call like this, you've probably seen this video. This screenshot I took, I've been using this example in presentations for over a year now. So this number is up over, well over 10 million views now. And so guaranteed that that, that number isn't all people in agriculture. It's not all people, um, it, it can't be all farmers, right? It can't be all people within our own industry. It's consumers that are watching it. And so anyone, any consumer that watches this video gets a great feeling for agriculture. They see young people involved. They see people that love what they do. They see animals being well cared for. Um, they see the hardworking family side. They see families feeding other families. Um, you know, so again, you don't always have to create your own content, but you can go to places like Instagram and YouTube and share the ones that are out there because that's why people put stuff on these platforms is to get it shared and to have their message told um, all over the place. Moving on to everybody's favorite, um, Facebook. So this is, this is the one that you likely have. If you don't have it, you've probably seen it. Your husband, your wife, your kids, your nieces, nephews, guaranteed 60% uh, of the people you know have Facebook. Um, so what it is is it's a profile-based social sharing site. So you create a profile um, with your picture, you know, you'd have a little um, profile picture like this. That's your profile picture. Um, and then you write about yourself, you know, how so how Heather introduced me, I, whatever, I live at the lake, I ski, um, that kind of thing. You know, you can put where you live. It's, it's just like any other profile and bio you fill out. Um, it's a great place to connect with friends and family. That's where it starts. Um, but you can also connect with businesses, brands, um, celebrities, athletes, whatever it is. Um, so there is, there's two different aspects to Facebook and I'll run through them right now here. Um, so the first thing, Facebook does have different audiences. Like I said, it starts with friends and family. Um, so you can't just see anyone's posts. On Instagram, you do have that option. So when you search by a hashtag, you can see pictures from people that you don't follow. When I opened up that advocate hashtag, I only followed about three of those people, but I can still see their content. Not so on Facebook. Facebook has a lot more privacy to it. Um, you know, that's where you can share the fact that you're pregnant um, and all your aunts and uncles and cousins will know about it then. Um, so you also, but you also have the option to create a business page. Um, so the Ag More Than Ever, they also have a business. I say business. Um, I also mean, you know, organization, club, whatever that is. You can create a page for that as well. So this is what a business organization page looks like. Um, I'm going to pull up my little draw tool here. Um, so what this is here is you can see, um, this is the title of it at the top. This is where it, um, 
Oh, if I was better at this, draw tool, there we go. That's the title of it, so that's where you go to search. Um, so if you're on Facebook and you want to find the Eggmore Than Ever page, that's where you go to search. You create a background picture here, you know, um, that. so this also looks the same as the personal pages now. You put a background picture, this is what I was talking about, that profile picture, you know, doesn't have to be you, um, you know, put a picture up of some canola or your dog or whatever it is that you enjoy. So on a business page, you can see here how you have to like it. Um, so on a personal page, you do not have to like someone. You And so this is public. I don't have to ask Egg more than ever's permission to like this page and see the information. If it's a personal page, you do have to ask permission. Um, even before you like it, you can send them a message. If you're interested in an organization, interested in someone like Egg more than ever, um, want to ask them a private question, send them a message. You can post on their page, share pictures with them. If you're taking selfies or advocate pictures, post it on here. I'm sure they'd love to see it. Um, you can see here they've got almost 12,000 likes there. You can go through their pictures, all kinds of different stuff. Get on there. Um, you know, check out all kinds of pages. Make sure you're searching. You know, use the keywords up here, um, agriculture, advocate, farm, farming, whatever it is that you're looking for, whatever it is you're interested in, um, make sure you do some searches. So this, again, just a personal example that um, you do, you need permission. So see here, I don't know Bob, um, so I have to add Bob as a friend, and then Bob has to accept me. Bob has to say, yes or no, I want Megan to see everything I post about my life. Um, you can also see mutual friends here. So the reason that Bob popped up in my search when I was just trying to find a random anonymous Bob to use as an example, because he's friends with uh, Richard Phillips, used to be with Green Growers, and Sean Haney of realagriculture.com. So that's why Bob showed up for me. Again, Bob's background picture, you know, you might be able to see some of his pictures, but just to show you the difference um, of what you can do on Facebook personal, personally and business-wise. So once you're on Facebook, there is the option for closed group conversations. Um, before I said, you know, all your friends and family and everyone you're connected with will see all of your content. Well, you can join closed groups. So this one here is one that I'm a part of, um, Alberta foodies, bloggers, writers, chefs, and more. Um, so this is a closed group where we share food pictures, um, restaurant openings, um, invitations to food events, recipes, all kinds of anything that all of us food bloggers and food writers would be interested in. So it's a group conversation. Um, this conversation won't show up in my timeline. So people don't know, uh, you know, my whatever, my sister wouldn't be able to see the conversations that I'm having in a closed group. And only people that are in that group are going to get the alerts, the conversations that I'm having. Um, the entire point here is that there are many groups. So if you're not comfortable, Plenty. You know, there's lots of farm, young farm groups, there's egg groups, there's, you know, corn groups, there's GMO groups. Find one um, and you don't, you don't even have to join the conversation. Just use it to stay informed. Use it to stay it on top of the, on top of trends and use it to find credible sources that you're using to share all over the place. Um, what I wanted to show you here was people get really intimidated um, when we talk about advocating on social media. People are like, Megan, I... Uh, no, I'm. I I can't write that. Uh, I can't put. I can't put string my words together. I don't know how to say that. You don't always have to. Um, you can be really valuable to your audience and to your followers simply by acting as a funnel and sharing positive, accurate information that already exists out there. So you can see here. Um, you know this little share button at the bottom. Um, that that's all you do. You click that, click share, and it'll go out to all of your friends and followers, whichever platform you're on. Share stuff. Um, you know, it'll then it'll share this um, this entire video. You know, share these cool, share these infographic style pictures that have facts on them. Um, you know, people always take the time to read this fact or at least read the description of a video. Um, I know that on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them, people scroll through these things really quickly. But um, you know, a more interesting image like this or a video, people generally will stop and uh, at least take some time to decide if they want to watch it or not. So yeah, you know, take the time, search out again, you know, post, these are both from the Ag More Than Ever page, um, one from the Ag More Than Ever in uh, their French page. So you know, there's, there's, there's resources out there in French and in English, there's tons of resources right on the Ag More Than Ever website. Um, get out there, you know, copy, paste, uh, share stuff all over the place. You don't have to do it all by yourself. 
Okay, now my favorite. Twitter is easily the most influential platform. All the examples I showed you when we got started here, um, Stephen Harper, Barack Obama, you know, all the most the, the in, most influential people on in the face of the planet are using Twitter to connect with their audiences, to connect with media, to connect with each other. The nice thing about Twitter is it was pretty much made for agriculture. Um, it has shrunk the geography in agriculture exponentially. It's amazing the conversations that guys have um, on Twitter now for, with people from other countries about what to do with their canola, um, you know, how about genetics in Charlet cattle, like the, the conversations that happen are amazing to watch. Um, you can have conversations with anyone in the world. So not like, not like Facebook where you have to be friends with someone first, but it's a far more open, it's a truly open source communication tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through Twitter 101 here. Um, I'll show you guys how to get set up, how to tweet, um, what tweeting means, how to find some good hashtags, how to get started. Um, one thing I want you to be cognizant of while we are moving through Twitter is that Twitter, Twitter can be amazing or Twitter can ruin your life if you do Twitter really badly. Um, I mean, we all watch the news. We've seen people get kicked out of the Olympics for things that they've tweeted. We've seen people get fired. We've seen people lose their their political seats. Um, so this is one um, where, you know, Twitter, Twitter, of course, like all social media, Twitter does have its, it's positive and it's negative. It's positive far outweigh its negatives as long as you, um, you know, as long as you're careful, as long as you stick to your messaging, stick to your brand. Um, the problem with Twitter, especially for all intents and purposes of what we're speaking about today, is that, you know, that old quote of a lie is halfway around the world before the truth has its time to get its pants on. And that's really true for the spread of misinformation as well as positive information. Um, you know, inaccurate egg and food information gets shared really quickly. So that's why we're here today to show you guys um, how to use it to, you know, how to find those conversations, how to jump in on them, how to, you know, be a bit of a myth buster, how to promote positive, all the positives of agriculture, so that when any myths and misinformation do come out, that, um, that people have a positive source to turn to. So this is, this is where you go. You literally go to twitter.com and you start filling it out. See where I've got that little arrow there, new to Twitter, yes I am, um, sign up, it's just that easy, you need an email address, um, which that's that's it, that's pretty simple, uh, fill out your name, your email, your password, and that's it, you're in, um, from there you are tweeting, uh, it's pretty simple, like I said, my uh, my dad on the ranch can do it, so I have full, full confidence that everyone that was able to make it onto a webinar can do Twitter. Um, I guess one thing to point out is, so this is your handle. When you signed up and you picked a username, that's what this is. So that's that at Cami Ryan, that's her handle. Um, and you can change that at any time. So if you don't want to be Cami Ryan anymore, you want to be, I don't know, Canola Doctor, you can change that at any time. So when you're getting set up on Twitter, don't spend too much time on the name. Um, you can change it all afterwards. The, the, the point I want to make here is I wanted to show you that this is what a profile looks like on social media, on Twitter, um, rather. So what this is, is this is what it looks like um, so that it, this is where you build your brand. If I could spit that out quicker, this is where you build your brand. You know, this description here, this is how people are going to decide how to follow you um, if they're interested. So Cammy, she's pro-science, pro-food critical thinker, you know, is interested in innovation in ag. So, you know, if those are the, the type, types of things that you're interested in, you're probably going to click follow. You have that option um, right down here. If I wasn't following her, this would be great, and it would say follow, and that's it. You click follow, and now Cami's information will come to you. This is one thing I really want you guys to think about is how you want to write this bio. You know, what do you want that brand to be? Do you want to be the, the honey lady, the lady that knows about bees? Um, do you want to be the guy that knows the, the, the GMO scientist that people come to for questions on GMOs and plant biotech? You know, decide what that is. Do you, do you want to be the farmer? You know, do you just want to help people understand their wheat and their canola? Um, whatever that is, decide what you want that to be and build that in there. 
So this is what an entire profile looks like um, for a business. So this is, uh, sorry, the business and the personal pages look the same on Twitter. There's there's no difference. This is just the newer style, how it, it's more similar to Facebook now with the background picture and um, and the profile, the bio shows up here. And so this is where, where you'll go to determine whether you want to follow someone or not. So this is also what your profile will look like once you get started. Over here, it makes some pretty good suggestions on who you should follow. Um, you know, it'll make suggestions based on um, your description, on the keywords involved. It'll say, you know, do you want to follow all these other egg people? Do you want to follow Bear and Dow? Do you want to follow RailAgriculture.com? What is it you're interested in? You know, do you want to follow the barley producers? Um, the, a great way to find people to follow um, to when you're first getting started is to find a good page. So you're interested in egg more than ever, obviously. Go to their page and check out their followers and their following lists. So these lists are public. Also important to know that everyone you follow, that is public. So, um, you know, before you follow uh, swimsuit models, remember that everybody will be able to see that. Um, so that this is a great way, you know, because chances are that egg more than ever is following a lot of farmers, a lot of egg businesses, um, a lot of other advocates. So, you know, check those two lists out and that's where you'll get lost. I promise. It's like on YouTube, you know, when it makes the suggestions along the side and it says, Oh, you sh if you're interested in this, you should also watch this video, um, and you will. You'll get lost because you'll find, you know, someone like Richard Phillips, and you'll say, oh, I wonder who he's following. And then from there, you'll find someone in there, and you'll wonder who they're following. And yeah, um, but this is, those are the two best ways to uh, to find. When you're getting started on Twitter, this over here, this is basically like your inbox. Treat that like your inbox. You can see how it's got notifications and for so anytime someone is talking to you or talking about you, it will show up in there. So you don't have to worry about scrolling through thousands and thousands of tweets to answer questions or um, you know reply to someone who sent you a note. It'll all show up right in there. You also have the option for private message, um, which you can do through here and now through over here too. Um, so there, there's that little DM there. It's called direct messaging. Please remember that direct message does not mean private message, that screenshots are still a thing. Um, so there's no such thing as a truly private conversation. If you need to have a really private conversation, uh, you know, pick up the phone. So yeah, this is kind of the overview of what Twitter looks like from a bio side. And then this is what Twitter looks like what its feed looks like. So this is basically your home screen. Um, and you can see here that this is where all the um, all the all those tweets show up. So anything that shows up in here is from someone you follow. So I follow Scooter Mojo and you can see that he is biking around uh, checking in. Oh no, he's drinking beer. That's an untapped app. Um, but you can see how I could click uh, you know 28 new tweets and all that they would all refill in there. Um, so anytime someone tweets, so how I just followed Egg more than ever, next time they tweet, it'll show up at the top here. So this feeds chronologically. This feed updates immediately as soon as someone tweets, and it's always uh, newest to oldest. So you can always scroll down as far as you want into the depths of Twitter and um, and read back as far as you want. You know, if you've been off Twitter for a week and you want to catch up, you can scroll back as far as you like. Again, it makes really good suggestions on who to follow, and it leaves this bar at the top as well. Private messages, you know, you can see your background. It's nice here to also be able to see what's trending. Um, so, you know, right now, I don't know, probably Iceland volcano and uh, there was a primary election in the U.S. today. So, you know, those things, those will, those, that will always tell you what was trending. When I took this screenshot, it was Iraq and ISIS and, yeah, all kinds of different. So this is always, it's also a great way to check the news. So if you're ever reading your timeline and wondering why there are people in there that you're that you didn't follow, um, you know why why am I seeing information from Terry Daynard when I don't follow Terry Daynard? Look to the bottom and it will say retweeted by. So I do follow Crop Life. Um, so that's why it's then getting put into my feed. Retweeting is like forwarding an email. Um, how that yes it used to be the cool thing to do was. Forward emails so that your, you know, your buddies could laugh or they could read a really good article that you had found online or uh, found in the Western producer or wherever this information was coming from. 
Retweeting is the new email forwarding. Um, so anytime, if I see good information from CropLife or from Egg More Than Ever, I retweet it. And that then gives, sends that information to all of my followers. Um, so that's why. If you're ever wondering why information in there is showing up that you didn't see, it's more than likely retweeted. You can see a couple of them down there. Hashtags. Um, also known as the pound sign in the past. Today, it's called the hashtag. For those of you that watch Super Bowl, um, you've probably noticed for about the past four years, every single commercial has had a hashtag in it. And why is that? Because hashtags are used to monitor conversation. Hashtags are used to monitor and control conversations so that you can find out what's trending, what people are saying about your brand, what people are saying about your interest, what people are saying about a specific topic that you might be interested in. That's what these hashtags are for. Um, and like I said, you know, they're, you can, you can create them. You can make up a hashtag for whatever you want. You know, if you, um, live in Ontario and you're an Agritrend rep, you could come up with Ontario Agritrend and just start hashtagging that. You don't have to get them approved. You don't have to use ones that already exist. Hashtags are relatively simple. Um, so this, like I said, this is a hashtag. That's what hashtags look like. Some pretty common hashtags that you'll be using are Agvocate. Um, the hashtag for anything to do with agriculture in Western Canada is hashtag West Canadian Ag. Um, there's also Aunt Egg, so O N T Egg for anything in Eastern Canada. Um, so yeah, PEI, um, all of our maritime provinces seem to get swept under that same Aunt Egg banner. It should just be East Egg, I guess, but um, that's how it is. So if you live in PEI and you can't find PEI Egg, check Aunt Egg. That's probably where all of your information is. Um, egg more than ever, also a really good one to check. Um, so yeah, that's. That's hashtags, and that's what they look like. And now I'll show you what they look like or how they're used. So, for example, um, if you're working in crop production, you're a farmer, row crop guy, um, hort guy, there's there hashtag farmers have started to use hashtags for every season. So planting, harvesting, spraying, scouting, there's a hashtag for it. Trust me. Um, if you are in Twitter and you go up, so this is your search bar in Twitter up here. So you can see all I did was I searched Scout 14. Um, that was the that was one of the seasons, and so now you can see all of the results of guys that are out there scouting people in agriculture. You can see here, uh, Craig Shan. So he is a farmer's edge guy um, down in southern Alberta. He's scouting his barley. You can see what stage it's at. You can see what it looked like, and then he's got a picture in there too. Um, so you can see really specific information that's in there. Um, you know, you can see the most specific agronomic information. You can see exactly what's happening with calving. There's calving 14. There's lambing 14. Um, you know, you can find whatever information it is that you want just by searching out the hashtags. Um, like I mentioned before on Instagram, when I search this hashtag, I'm only following uh, two of these people. So with the power of hashtags is so that you can find relevant accounts, find relevant tweets from people that you might not follow. So these are tweets from everyone that's posting. Um, also make sure you're watching this top and all. Top is the most influential tweet, so that's some um, horrific mathematical algorithm that Twitter uses um, to determine what a top tweet is. If you want to make sure you're not missing anything and you want to see the most up-to-date ones, make sure you're selecting all. Uh, this is a great example of how hashtags are being used at events, especially agricultural events. Anytime I'm, you know, doing social media training or even like full communications training to other industries, I have to use agriculture as an example because agriculture has really embraced it and, you know, it's just been so powerful. So uh, this is an example when the Canola Council did their Canola Lab. Um, this, you know, if you, if you didn't attend, all you had to do was follow this Canola Lab 13 hashtag, and you got basically the same teachings and information that everybody else did. Um, so you know you can see exactly what root rot versus black leg looked like, what black leg infested residue looked like, um, what the symptomology of late app on glyphosate on Roundup Ready canola was. You know, aster yellows. Really specific information out there um, that you know whether you're on here as a farmer or an industry expert or um, you know someone in egg business that you can track events, you can track trends, you can track exactly what's happening in the industry by the second. 
Um, this is just one slide I wanted to pull up um, for if there were any farmers on the any farmers here on the on the webinar. Um, I, I, there was also, like I mentioned, there an AgriTrend guy on there. So you know, th these are conversations that your farmers are having that are. You know that our our producers are having online really specific agronomic conversations that used to only happen over the phone with a guy that they already knew. This way, these guys are getting information from people they've never met, people provinces away, people countries away. Um, so you know, like I mentioned again, just really specific conversations that it it is. It's really eliminating geography as a factor in agricultural learning and peer to peer information sharing. Um, the, the, one, the point I wanted to make with this slide is merely that um, there are, well, we can share all the positive hashtags in the world. Um, you know, we can talk on egg more than ever. We can talk about, you know, on Canadian egg, West Canadian egg, on egg, as much as we want. We're preaching to the choir. Um, we really are. It's, um, you know, it's a lot of agricultural people that follow those, that contribute to those. So what we need to do is be on the watch for hashtags that are on the, you know, that, that don't talk about agriculture specifically that talk about other trends, um, you know, that talk about GMO labeling, that talk about neonics and bees, those sorts of things where we can jump in and offer valuable conversation, offer facts, offer credible resources. Um, so, you know, watch for advertising, watch for things like this. I saw a few um, when people were logging in there, um, a few organizations, a few businesses, you know, create hashtags, put them in your newsletters, put them on your posters, put them on your conference invites, um, so that the, the more conversation we're having out there and the more you're creating and using positive hashtags, um, or even just hashtags where you can, um, where you can monitor conversations, the better. Egg chat is, well, obviously right now, right there, a weekly conversation for people in agriculture. So whether you're a producer, whether you're working egg finance, whether you're a young person looking to get into agriculture, whether you're, you know, anything from a goat farmer to a canola farmer to a hemp farmer, um, egg chat is for you. So it happens once a week, Tuesdays from 8 to 10 Eastern, and all you do is you jump on there and you follow the hashtag egg chat, and egg chat, uh, the account, posts a different question every Oh, someone will probably correct me here. Every two to three minutes, I think, and they just let um, let let the people involved have conversations. It's a great way to be able to share information, connect with other people. You know, have specific conversations. They change the topic every week. Um, so you know, again, just another great way to connect online, to find other sources, to chat with people, to make connections, uh, to network on on there um, and again to find positive people to and good information to share. So how do you grow it in the first place? You get on Twitter, nobody is going to see you tweet, nobody's going to know you're there. So the first thing you do is you follow some accounts. Um, you know, follow some relevant accounts. Get on there, follow, you know, search the hashtag, search West Canadian Egg, Canadian Egg, Aunt Egg, and you know, find some people that tweet good information and follow them. Um, you know, the second way to, to grow your own followers is to provide value, you know, retweet good information, post, post your own good information, post pictures, post videos. Um, like I said, you know, it doesn't have to be your own content. That value can come from sharing other content. Um, reply, jump into conversations, engage, interact. Um, and yeah, you know, monitor other conversations. Run a search every once in a while for GMOs or for, you know, things like that and jump in on those conversations. Have conversations with people that are asking questions and people that are doing research. The one, the, the point I wanted to show here was depend, was audience dependent. So as a communications professional, um, I always want you to think about who your target audience is when you're working on anything. Um, I know it sounds too formal for something like Twitter, but there is. Um, you know, like I said before, you're you're building a brand about who you are, who you want to be online, what conversations you want to you want to have, what your goals are. Um, so while you're thinking about that, think about the vocabulary that you're using. You can see how on the right here, I search GMO. And then you can see the types of accounts that are coming up in my search, right? All negative, right? All non-GMO, all, um, you know, all, all negative is the best, most 
PC word I've got for that. Um, but then you see plant biotech, right? Same term, different vocabulary. You can see how it's all positive, um, or science-based at least. Uh, you know, it's all scientific, it's agricultural. Um, you know, it's this is where you're going to use positive. Uh, you're going to get your credible sources from to share into this feed, you know? Take this information and retweet it into here. Use the word GMO then so that this information is getting into this feed because the people that are searching for, you know, this are finding the information that they want to find. Um, they're not finding information, you know, from this side that um, that might offer an alternative opinion, might offer a, a, diff a source they've never seen before, those sorts of things. So I just wanted you to be cognizant of vocabulary as you're depending on your goal, who you're trying to talk to, think about the vocabulary involved. Um, this slide here, I just wanted to show you the, the power of social media. Um, so this was the Chipotle um, scare campaign that came out um, a while ago, earlier this year, uh, you know, with those videos with the scarecrow. And the reaction that came out immediately from the agricultural community was awesome to watch. Um, you know, so ag news um, sites online were saying, you know, calling it out as scare marketing, um, you know, then they started their own hashtag of Chipotle lies and then, you know, posted a blog about it, about um, grass-fed beef and things like that. So, you know, make sure that you are monitoring, um, monitor the, I guess competition is not the right word, monitor the detractors, uh, you know, look for it. whatever it is that you want to have conversations about, make sure that you are searching for a balanced side. Make sure you are considering what the arguments are, considering what the other guys are saying, so that you can follow those conversations and jump in, um, offer resources, if at all possible. Um, my favorite in the last few months has been A&W and following this conversation online. Um, A&W, you know, again, social media itself self-corrects really quickly. The second that misinformation comes out, um, incorrect facts, there's someone out there uh, correcting it, posting a link, um, you know, having a conversation about it, starting a debate for the most part. Um, so that it made me really happy to see that as soon as A&W came out, the, the Canadian farmers fought back. The Canadian beef ranchers had their say, which was great to see. Um, you know, so A&W here using clever marketing tactics to talk about their seemingly healthier burgers. And then they've, you know, got a post to some, some facts about the Canadian beef. Um, the Eat Canadian Beef hashtag got used so often. Um, you know, talking, so many farmers were outraged that, you know, there was a lot of them like this one here that talked about, we'll never eat at A&W again. Um, this here, this was a conversation where they went and spoke at um, the Sask Beef Producers meeting that A&W went there. And so you could have followed that entire conversation of how that went on social media. Um, here's a great quote. Our job isn't to educate consumers about better beef. Um, so, you know, things like that, that this is where a lot of marketing, um, you know, people in marketing and PR really have to dot their I's and cross their T's now because there is always pushback on anything that takes a stance, there's gonna be pushback. And so if there's something that you don't agree with, push back, ask for more information. Um, that's, uh, you know, that it's easy to do. This one I wanted to show you because this was a perfect example of how it's not just Twitter. Um, it can go so much further. This is a CBC News piece that then got shared all over the place. Uh, it was picked up by CTV Global, um, all, like all, it became national news. Um, that the ranchers had a problem with the a w burger campaign. And how did they get this story? From all of the ranchers on Twitter. Um, they saw the trend of ranchers pushing back, of ranchers sharing Canadian beef information, sharing Canadian beef facts, which was awesome to watch. And so, you know, don't ever think that it's just your six followers that are that are paying attention to what it is you say. Uh, it can go bigger. You're, you're part of a bigger movement here. You know, you're here to speak for for agriculture, I mean, for your industry, for your peers, for other producers, um, you know, that's that's why we're here is to support each other and share the information that we all that we all know. Tell people about the industry that we love um, and do it in a way that um, that gets results and makes some noise. So, I 
of course, I'm a chiver like most people. So, uh, you know, it, I'm also extremely opinionated. Odd. I know you probably don't get that from me. I'm really scared of public speaking. Um, but, you know, keep calm is this is something I have to remind myself of every day is that it is we're here to educate and inform, not to, uh, you know, debate and to, uh, you know, not for that propaganda side. You know, we're here for balanced conversation. We want people to be connecting with their ranchers, connecting with their farmers, connecting with each other and telling the story of agriculture. Um, so just keep calm and stand up for the ag industry is, um, is what I want you to walk away with from here today. Um, also, we want you guys to go check out the Ag More Than Ever site. Their resources, they have tons of pictures like this, um, you know, lots of images like this that are easy for you guys to share on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where, wherever it is you want. They've got videos, they've got articles, they've got lots of things. Um, you know, tweet the resource and share a positive message about it. Say, you know what, um, with this picture you could say, yeah, I have a, my farm is a family farm, glad to work with my sons every day, um, or, you know, my daughter's only two and already loves her pet goat or whatever it is, um, you know, share a positive message, share how much you love egg, that's what we're all here for, we do, we, you know, it's not just, um, it's not just a job, it's a, it's an entire lifestyle, it's a passion, it's, we do it because we love it and because we do realize that the world needs to get fed and someone has to do it. Um, so that's what we're here for, you know, tell, tell those stories, um, let people do it, um, you know, help other, help other people, share other people's stories if you don't want to tell your own. Um, make sure that we're getting as much positive information out to um, out to consumers and out to, you know, decision makers, out to anyone that's not directly involved in our industry, get them as much information as we can because they're, they're curious, you know, I'm curious about oil field, right? So um, the more I can learn about that, the better. So there's people out there that are interested in our industry as well. So um, let's show them the positive, uh, scientific, agronomic side of it and show them that family side, show them that there's people feeding you know, feeding other people, that it's our family feeding their family. That's it. I never finish on time. I talk so much. So great. We have lots of time for questions now. Okay. Oh, I've got lots of questions on the bottom here. I will read them and go and answer them as we're on here. So I have a question from, what is this? Is this TweetDeck? Um, no, this was just from the Twitter website because it's the easiest spot to take um, screenshots from because that way it, it's usually as up to date as possible and not a lot of people use a management tool like Hootsuite or TweetDeck. Um, down here, how do we balance a growing, oh, how do we balance a growing presence growing personal presence with with representing a business, organization, company, etc. using Twitter as an example. So that all goes back to that brand. Um, you know, it, it depends on what that brand is that you want to build. Um, I have a separate I have separate accounts. So my business account and my personal account are separate because um, I'm I am I'm relatively opinionated. I stand up for things like uh, like like GMO and food recalls and those are conversations I want to get involved with but my PR company probably doesn't need to touch but really you know it, it's all about it is balance it depends on you know your depends on what your organization is like you know what your business is how related your personal life is to your business there's really no one answer it's very situational um, it, it entirely depends you know if you're representing a a board of directors or an organization or a business, um, you know, whether it's Alberta Beef or something like that, you do have to find a balance. If you're going to say in your bio, hey, I work at, at Alberta Beef, then yeah, you are still representing them. That dull caveat of tweets are my own, a uh, lawyer does not care that you wrote that in your, um, in your Twitter bio and anything you say can and will be used against you. So make sure that you are finding that balance between either entirely distancing your personal side from your work or that you're kind of representing the work side as well if you are going to note that, you, that you're there. Um, 
Oh, thanks, Christine. No question, just a good comment. Um, oh, here we go. How do you how do you react if someone challenges you on Twitter? Well, how you react and how I react are probably very different. Um, but it really, again, it's very situational, you know. If, if it, they're very confrontational about, you know, a, a touchy subject, subject like GMOs or hormone-free beef or something like that, I would remain factual, you know, remain like I kept saying over and over, you know, use credible resources, be that credible resource, um, share your own experiences, say, you know what, actually, I live on a farm, I work on it, here's what I do. Um, it doesn't help to get down to their level. Um, like I said, you know, you can always bring other people into the conversation, too. Um, you know, you can tag them in and say, hey, um, you know, I'm not the expert on that. You should talk to this guy, too. Um, but again, try and keep a level head, like I said. Try and remain calm because if you're, like I said earlier, this is not for you to get on a soapbox. Um, you know, you have to you have to remain balanced to be seen as intelligent and credible. I really like the face that the webcam froze on. Can you explain more about the top and all functions in Twitter? Uh, yes, I can. Sorry, that ran through that really quickly. So when you are running a search in Twitter, it does give you the option for top top tweets or all tweets. And so it depends. If, you, if you're just looking for, for information on something that's trending, um, you can just search through the top tweets to see what people are talking about, what the most influential accounts are saying. If you are looking for, say you're following a conference um, or an event, you'll want to go to all tweets so that you can see the most up-to-date information as possible. Um, my personal Twitter address is at Southpaw Megan, so it's up on the screen there right now. I'm Southpaw Megan. Our, um, our, our PR company is at Southpaw PR Inc. if you want to follow us there. And that's it. I'm out of questions. Um, again, yeah, if so, if you guys just got my Twitter handle. I'm Southpaw Megan. You can also catch us at Southpaw PR Inc. If you are interested or if you have any more questions, feel free, send us a tweet. Um, the, um, you know, the, the questions never end, and this was a pretty, this was a really high-level presentation. Um, if you have any questions at all, and I'm sure you will, feel free to send me a tweet or go back to uh, the Ag More Than Ever uh, team there, and they can direct you my way if it's something that they can't answer as well.